Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter two talking about mobile application test types and getting into the next topic of it, which is 2.2, testing for app interaction with device softwares. As a part of the previous tutorial, we understood a lot of things about interacting with the device hardware. And now we will be getting into the device software, which are equally important. And the very first thing we are talking about is testing for the notifications. Now notifications are again pretty important to when you test the particular app which basically comes up in different manners and can have certain interrupts as well. So there are various mechanisms used by the operating system to display notifications. Sometimes the operating system will either delay the display of the notification or fail to display as well at all in a bid to optimize power consumption. This following test conditions must be considered in order to test the notifications of a particular app which you are testing. Now, the correct handling of the notification received when the app is uh, in the foreground or the background, especially under the low battery conditions, because low battery conditions generally try to prevent and get into the power saving mode. And power saving mode has one of the options which avoids unwanted notifications to be displayed. As far as you want to visit that app, you can see the updates, but notifications will be not allowed. That we wanna see that if the app behaves appropriately with the software conditions when it comes to the notifications of the app. Also, if notifications allow direct interaction uh, with the app content, for example, without opening the app itself, the user interaction must be provided by the app at a later time. If, or for example, user responds to a notification, then it must be possible to access that response within the app at a later time. Now. This is the best example to understand this is WhatsApp on the screen. Now WhatsApp uh, can be enabled to pop up on the locked screen as well. And definitely you can read the message, you can respond to the message without unlocking your phone. Now that is a little unsafe situation. For example, if your phone is unattended, definitely other people can also do the same what you are trying to do. But yeah, just from the ease of access point of view, you really don't have to unlock your phone in order to respond to it. But when you respond, out of the lock screen, then later at any point of time when you go to the WhatsApp, these chat must be stored there so that you can refer, okay, I responded these things earlier, now I'm getting into the app and I can find them there. So this is one of the examples to tell you what we are talking about testing such notifications on the screen. And we will be uh, you know, making sure that we have written uh, efficient test cases to test them. Also, if notification allows access to the app, then the corresponding page of the app must be opened instead of the home screen when the notification contains a deep link to that page. Of course, if you talk about any of the apps which are dealing with news updates, uh, probably a Google notification to sign in into a Google app, and you generally get a pop-up on the screen which says that confirm your access, for security reasons, that is that you. So when you click on such notifications or unlock your phone by clicking on that, it should not take you to Gmail, it should not take you to probably the banking homepage, it should directly land you up on that particular news. In fact, if you talk about the news apps, when they notify you that, hey, there's a new news about your health thing, or this is an update on the uh, Olympics happening right now. So you just click on that particular link and it does not take you to the homepage of the news app, rather it takes you exactly to that particular article which you are notified about. So those things we really need to take into account when we test this particular app and the interaction with the software of the application and the devices. Moving into the next testing for quick access links, which is another important thing. So quick access links such as app shortcut in Android and face touch, force touch or 3D touch for iOS may be provided by the software and the test. This feature performs a subset of application functionality from the home screen itself without actually launching the entire app. So you do have a lot of such interaction with respect to the quick access links can be operated right at the uh, home screen without actually entering into that. So the following test conditions must be considered in order to test such quick access links with the device software interaction where some of the features are only available on a particular version of the operating system, the system under test must behave correctly if it is installed 
own versions of the operating system which either offer or do not offer such features or not. So there are so many possible conditions which you can actually target in order to try them and put it across to see that if they are really allowing such things on a particular version of this, if there are limitations on the features, then the limited features must be tested and making sure that the other features are not available. And when you have the full version of it and you do have full access to it, you want to just make sure that everything else is still in place to make sure that the user interaction is up to the date and up to the mark. Also, the action performed in a quick access link are reflected correctly in the app when opened. So whatever you know, quick access links you have worked with, you know, maybe on the shortcut or on the desktop icon or something, then you generally go with the app later. Then you should find all that interaction what you have done uh, done as saved into the uh, app details so that when you open it, you find everything there. So again, the data migration, data integration should take place every point of time, no matter how you interact with it. And at the later point of time, you should be able to find all that sort of information which you passed on during that quick access link interaction. Also further to add, we do have another next thing to talk about is testing for user preferences provided by the operating system. Now, any preferences which include settings provided by user by the operating system must be tested. If your app has any sort of interaction with these settings, should be abided. For example, like making your phone mute or reducing a volume for the notifications or turning off music on that. So those things should go with your system settings as well. It creates a negative experience for the users if a certain preference setting is not respected by the app. For example, if the device is set to mute, the app should not play any sounds. The following test conditions must be considered in order to test it. For example, users can amend typical preferences options such as sound, brightness, network, power save mode, date and time, time zone, languages, access type and notification. This is what it puts all together when it comes to testing the preferences from the settings and this applies to any particular app. For example, if you talk about the uh, time zone, of course, uh, it does depend on uh, which time zone you have selected in and which time zone you are actually in. So most of us keep our time zone automatic. So if we travel to a different country, our time automatically switches to that particular local time and uh, the emails, notifications are all captured as per the date and time which you are in right now. So the app should be able to adapt the system settings in order to meet those expectations. And a lot of time it happens that when you travel, you generally don't prefer to change your uh, date and time. So you put it on, instead of automatic, you put it on manual and you want to still retain as per your home time to see that you know there was no synchronization issue. Because sometimes it does happen when you do a time flight, like you know you travel from a particular corner where it is night and then you just jump into three hours to a day zone, the time changes and date changes. As you would have seen a lot of stories about doing a day travel, like somebody traveled on 30th of, uh, 31st of December and uh, went to the other time zone which was still 30th. 30th of December with certain timeline. So those kind of things will definitely be impacting your data. So we want to just make sure that these things will be taken into account and tested with all the system settings. And not only that, we do have languages which is applied for the entire home. You do have font, you do have style of writing something. So all those things should take place for every single app if they are interacting with it. Additional thing to add here, the apps adhere to the set preference by behaving accordingly. So should be adhering to that and should not be boycotting or overcoming those uh, set preferences which can lead into problems. So putting it all together, we just spoke about some of the uh, testing types as a part of the device testing for uh, with the uh, device software. And we'll be getting back to you with the part two of this tutorial in the next session. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.